walk on the soles of their feet, same way as bears do, as humans do. It's a fearless animal, and it's a tenacious animal. Across an area of 500 square miles, we might expect to find six to 10 living in that area. Extremely low population densities. Population densities that many species would not be able to persist at. The single characteristic that allows the wolverine to do this is its almost insatiable need to be on the move, to travel long distances in a short period of time. At the southern portion of the wolverine's range, we know that habitat is naturally fragmented. They live in these high mountain areas and have to be able to communicate genetically with other island populations. So it, it raises issues about connectivity and the animal's ability to move between these island habitats. Places where wolverines live, 20 years ago, it was all largely de facto wilderness. We are now choosing to recreate in places that we never did in the past and that are now important wolverine habitat. Snowpack is critically important to successful wolverine reproduction and a warming climate has a very direct effect on the depth and the distribution of snowpack. We spent most of our effort over the last couple decades just trying to better understand the life history requirements of this animal. But those have not really led us towards understanding the factors that regulate these populations. So a group of wolverine researchers got together in the 90s and decided that if we were going to be able to to learn more about this animal, we needed to raise funding. And the way to do that was to elevate public awareness of this animal. And the Wolverine Foundation currently is the only entity that really provides a clearinghouse of information so people can develop an understanding of the animal's life history. They can see what sort of research is currently underway. They can sort of follow what we're, what we're learning about this animal uh, as we learn it. And, and it's our opportunity to be able to share that with the public and also share it with the scientific community. One of the most important things I think that we need to focus on is whether or not these populations are remaining viable. One thing we recognize is that these populations can come and go as a direct result of our activities without us even being aware that it happened.